So a quick uh, disclaimer before you get on any slow-moving boat ride. Um, if you know me, you know I wouldn't miss a chance uh, to theme a talk after something at Disney. That's kind of my bag. Um, so that's what we're going we're gonna to talk about, vector tiles on this talk. If you were hoping for um, a Disney kind of map theme talk, uh, here's uh, the Small World ride laid out on a Mercator map that I did a couple years ago. And I'm sure with a room full of uh, cartographers, we could talk about how geographically, geographically problematic this is, but we'll just move on. Uh, so hi, I'm Jonah. I focus on GIS and cartography for about 20 years now. I'm also a member of the OpenStreetMap US board. So if you have any OpenStreetMap questions, come track me down. Uh, and if you want to follow along, I have uh, slides up at my website. And anything in purple is a link that you can click on. And uh, hopefully, if the internet cooperates, I'll do some live demos along here, too. Uh, so as the least technical person here, uh, my quick definitions, if, if you need help during this talk. So vector tiles are just uh, a format of your data, really compact and uh, tiled for super fast rendering. Um, a style is kind of how your data gets rendered. So if you think of like a CSS uh, document, and a client is just a code library, it could be web, could be desktop, uh, that reads your vector tiles from a style file. Uh, what I probably won't talk too much about is uh, Mapbox Studio. Um, it's kind of like the Cadillac of style editors. Um, uh, I, I'm going to talk more about a lot of other style editors that I've worked with over the last year on a bunch of projects. Uh, this is a map of uh, every bridge in the US and its traffic count um, in vector tiles. So you can see there's about 800,000 points here being rendered. Uh, and even with the really bad internet here, you can see it renders really fast. Um, so that's uh, Mapbox Studio. Um, we'll talk about Tangram Play. Has anybody heard of that? Uh, I think the developers are actually here if you want to track them down and talk to them a little bit more. Uh, Tangram is a, um, a vector tile uh, style editor uh, that uh, reads your tiles and uh, you write the styling in YAML. Uh, I had never really messed with it before I had to do it for a work project a couple of months ago. <laughs> and I kind of fell in love with it uh, just because it was really uh, simple to do a lot of uh, really neat things. Um, like if you want to just add a font, you can just add the font straight from a web link, right? You don't have to go through like generating like a, um, a glyph sheet or, you know, sprite sheet or all that kind of stuff. Um, you can just kind of call your sources straight out. Uh, the access token's not going to work for anybody if you want to copy it. But um, you can add, you know, multiple styles in there, multiple sources into your style. Uh, a normal layer would look like this. So you can see, like, I'm calling a, a spe specific source. I'm calling a specific layer within that source. I can do all kinds of nice uh, functions in there. Uh, so. I can, I can pretty much do any kind of really quick JavaScript function in there. So in this instance, I needed to find anything that started with the word footway uh, in my data, which was kind of nice to be able to do. Uh, and then you can see I can kind of nest my style to where I have like a casing and a line and a label all kind of done in the same thing, which is really nice. So what I really liked about that was the global properties. So you can do, um, you can set your colors as a global property. So then you don't have to retype the color in every layer all the way through your, you know, 4,000 line sprite doc, uh, style document. You can just say green is this value and every time I'm gonna say green from now on, I'm not gonna worry about writing the whole value out. And you can do that with uh, pretty much any element in the style. You can set a global property. So um, here is 
what tan gram really looks like, and I'm going to make that a little bigger. Um, so this is a live uh, tan gram project here. So you can see I can set uh, a global property for like the language that gets rendered. So if there's like a fallback language you want to do, you can do that. I can set a global property for the sorting uh, if that's in your data. And you can see I can do my colors here uh, and my fonts. So I can just call the font a name and you know reference it here. And then down in my document, I can just call the font by its name. I don't have to like do a bunch of weird stuff. Um, so I really, I really kind of lo uh, loved the way this was all set up. Um, the functions were really good, and you know, just the nesting of your style layout was really great. Uh, if you're into like a point-and-click kind of GUI, this is not for you probably. <laughs> um, and there's a really uh, intense kind of shader thing where you can do all kinds of like crazy animation stuff that I never really had a chance to get into, but it is really hard. Uh, but there's a, uh, an actually like a book somebody wrote just on the shader aspect of it and the stuff you can do. So you can, uh, I think it's called Book of Shaders. Um, and I probably wouldn't have got too far if I didn't uh, kind of spy on uh, this great cartographer, Geraldine Sarmiento. She has a repo uh, that's linked here of just crazy like tangram based styles. And if I hadn't, you know, gone through all of her stuff and seen how she did, I, I wouldn't have got too far at all. So that was really nice. Um, so Matt Putnick, Matt Putnick is an open source uh, style editor. Kind of looks like this. Um, this is an act actually a map that a 11 year old kid made. Uh, I would use Matt Putnick uh, with our local Code for America Brigade to teach kids how to make maps sometimes. And uh, it was simple enough that I could show a couple things to a 10-year-old kid, and this is the map he made with it, um, which is insane. Um, so this is a really kind of easy to use style editor. If, you're, uh, if you ever use Mapbox Studio, this is comparable to it. Um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Uh, but it can get you can do a lot with it. Um, uh, let's see. Here's Matt Butnick live calling a style. So this is just a total base map here, a dark style base map that I worked on. Um, so you can see you got your kind of layers laid out, and for every layer you have, you've got all these properties you can set, uh, which is nice. Um, what I liked about this is really comparable if you use Mapbox Studio but don't want to invest in the Mapbox infrastructure. You just want to point it to some tiles and style them yourself and make your own style. Uh, the full, uh, being able to see the full style element, so down here uh, on the left, that's the entire JSON style for your element, right? So you have access to either edit that or edit through a GUI at the same time. So if something's easier to edit in JSON, uh, you can do it in there. If you want to write your filter out a lot easier than going through like a point and click, you can do that. Uh, so I really liked that part of it. And open development, so uh, there's a GitHub repo where you can just file an issue or you can see what bugs and stuff are already there and you can kind of comment on it and say, this is really important, please do this, or uh, even donate to them. Um, it is behind on the style spec though, so if you're looking for something that's uh, got parity with the, the latest Mapbox GL spec, it doesn't have that, um, which I found out uh, on a recent project. Um, so the newer like expression language and filtering isn't supported in there yet, you'll just get like an error and stuff, but um, if you just render it with like a client side app instead of going through there, it'll still work, so it's just, kind of hard to see what you're doing if you get errors in there, but not a, definitely not a knock on them or anything. Uh, the next one, oh yeah, and they have a, on their repo, they have a show and tell for all these examples of people using Matputnik in action, which is really nice, um, and kind of gives you a lot of examples to go by. Uh, the Esri Vector Style Editor, so this is uh, another web-based app uh, so you can either use existing uh, 
styles that Esri's created, or you can create your own. Uh, those are done through, you create your own through uh, ArcGIS Pro, which is a desktop app, which is kind of nice um, to get in there and, you know, have the full functionality of a desktop application to set your layers up and styling and all that. Um, here is, oop, I was using too much memory. Here's the uh, style editor. So what's great about the Esri vector tiles is they support all different kinds of projections. So you can see uh, this is definitely not a Mercator map here. Um, and uh, you can also do like a lot of crazy stuff. Oh, this was reloading, that's fine. Um, like, and I'm gonna zoom in here. This is crazy that it's like loading across the conference Wi-Fi, right? Here's uh, the national address database, uh, which isn't complete for the whole US yet, but this is um, every address point in Virginia right here, styled by like the type of street it is. Um, so you can see like all the way down here, you can see how they went like really hard into naming things Avenue, um, just in this one section of town and stuff. But this is kind of the power of vector tiles, right? Like no matter what uh, provider you're using or whatever, you can just kind of they're really fast and performant, uh, and it's really awesome to work with. Um, yeah, so projections, that's the great part. Desktop publishing is a great part. Uh, but they're definitely not like what you see is what you get when you publish straight from Pro. There's uh, some weird things that happen that don't quite make it sometimes. Uh, there's some weird stuff that's kind of unsupported uh, against the map box spec. Uh, and if you want to customize them, it can be a lot of legwork just because you have to do a lot of copying and pasting and downloading your code and uploading your code and making changes. Um, in the tile editor, uh, you're not going to be able to like change a filter or anything like that, like how something's read. It's kind of limited in the properties, but they're working on it a lot and it's always being updated. So. Uh, that was the Esri one, and they have a pretty cool vector-based maps group on AGL you can check out. It has a lot of great examples, and the cool thing about that is that um, you can just kind of download the JSON and see how they're writing stuff out in there and just kind of use it. So for some weird experiments that I was able to do in a lot of these projects um, was working with like multiple levels of bridges and shadows. Uh, on these complex interchanges uh, and kind of experimenting with different ways to do them. So like you can see here, I tried line width and line translate. Um, and you can get some pretty good, you know, and I had to go into the data and actually say this is like level zero, level one, level two, level three, because they had like multiple levels to get these like shadows to really work. But you know, this is kind of some really interesting like cartographic stuff you can do on the fly with the vector tiles, uh, which is nice. Um, this is uh, hill shading in vector tiles, so not raster hill shade, but like a vector hill shade. So my least technical person in the room process for that was just generating some focal stats to smooth my raster out, then hill shading that, and then reclassifying that so I could group you know, value zero through 200 into more smaller groups, and then converting that raster to a polygon, and then just displaying that polygon. Um, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, I know that kind of animates too fast and it's gonna give me a, uh, hypnotize me, but um, you can see like, for this one I did several different kind of base maps and was able to implement a hill shade in each one of those. Uh, these are the Esri OpenStreetMap tiles in Tangram. So the cool thing Esri does is they have an OSM mirror, so you can access the whole OpenStreetMap database uh, through vector tiles, and you don't have to use them in Esri software. You can use them in Tangram. You can use them in Mapbox stuff. Um, so here's, the, here's like a live example of that. That's live. Uh, you can even take your cool like non-mercator tiles and put them in map box and add like things you shouldn't do like this is I've got like a forced tilt perspective on it. <laughs> so it's like uh, as mutual projection being tilted uh, just just to have fun, right? Got to experiment. Uh, 
Another cool thing you can do is, um, and this is gonna load maybe, um, you can add multiple sources in your vector tiles. So if we go, and it looks like I logged out, but you can add multiple sources and uh, bring in tiles from different providers in the same map, right? So if I wanted to look at Mapbox's OSM data and Esri's OSM data in the same map, I could do that, right? And kind of have a battle royale and like look at the intricacies of how each of them render data at different zoom scales and stuff, which you can get kind of crazy with. Um, oh yeah, here's, a, here's an example of uh, a client wanted to bring in OSM POIs into their normal data, right? So this is their local GIS building data with OpenStreetMap POIs all in one vector base map. So you can, there's a lot of, that opens up the possibilities to like do a lot of cool stuff across there. So all the code and links for everything I did are at these here, and that's my talk, thank you.